Welcome back to Disturbed Reality. The Juarez Cartel is one of the oldest drug gangs in Mexico, and formerly one of the most powerful in the 1990s. Some would even say the most powerful. However, as the years have passed, they lost influence due to prominent leaders being captured or killed, as well as infighting. As a result, they lost control and territory as other gangs such as the Gulf Cartel, Cartel de Sinaloa, Los Etas, and eventually CJNG would fill the void over the coming years. The Juarez Cartel are still currently active, however they are a shadow of their former selves. In fact, so much so that their armed wing, La Linea, or in English, the line, have overtaken them in regards to power, influence, and connections. Back in the 1980s, Mexico's drug trade was dominated by the Guadalajara cartel. They were the only real powerhouse in the Mexican underworld. However, things would begin to change after the murder of DEA agent Kiki Camarena. Kiki Camarena was murdered by the Guadalajara cartel on February the 9th, 1985, while he was working undercover, attempting to bring down the organization. How his cover was blown is unknown, though many speculate he may have actually been sold out by his own people, due to discovering that the CIA was working with the cartels to fund anti-communist Contras in Nicaragua. Whatever the truth is, is unknown. However, Camarena was tortured for hours, brutalized, before eventually being killed, with his body being dumped in the state of Michoacan. Following the discovery of his body on March the 5th, 1985, the DEA and the authorities would focus the spotlight further on the Guadalajara cartel increasing pressure on their operations and leaders. The murder of Agent Camarena outraged the US government and put pressure on Mexico to arrest all the major players involved in the incident, resulting in a four-year law enforcement manhunt that brought down several leaders of the Guadalajara cartel. The US applied heavy political pressure to the Mexican government throughout the investigation, going as far to close several US-Mexican port of entries for a period of several days. After the arrest of Rafa Caro Quintero and Ernesto Fonseca Carrillo in April of 1985 for the Camarena murder, Felix Gallardo, the Guadalajara cartel leader, kept a low profile and, in 1987, moved with his family to the city of Guadalajara. Due to the increased pressure of the Mexican government, Felix the Godfather Gallardo then decided to divide up the trade he controlled, as it would be more efficient and less likely to be brought down in one law enforcement swoop. In a weird way, he was privatizing the Mexican drug business while sending it back underground to be run by bosses who were less well known or not known yet by the DEA. Felix Gallardo convened the nation's top drug narcos at a house in the resort city of Acapulco, where he designated the plazas or territories. Different drug lords were given a certain region where they could traffic drugs to the US, and tax smugglers that wished to move merchandise on their turf. The Tijuana route would go to his nephews, the Ariano Felix brothers. The Ciudad Juarez route would go to the Carrillo Fuentes family, headed by the nephew of Fonseca Carrillo, Armado Carrillo Fuentes. Miguel Caro Quintero would run the Sonora Corridor. Control of the Matamoros or Tamaulipas Corridor would be left undisputed to Juan Garcia Abrego, the then leader of the Gulf Cartel. Meanwhile, Joaquin El Chapo Guzman and Ismael Zambada Garcia would take over the Pacific Coast operations, becoming the Sinaloa Cartel. 
Joaquin Guzman and Ismail Zambada brought veteran Hector Luis Palma Salazar back into the fold. Felix Gallardo still planned to oversee national operations. He had the contacts, so he was still the top man, but he would no longer control all details of the business. However, despite his best laid plans, Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo was arrested on April the 8th, 1989, which would essentially end the Guadalajara cartel as it was structured. Following the arrest of Felix Gallardo, he essentially created a multitude of new cartels due to dividing up the plazas. With him no longer overseeing the plazas, the crews running them essentially went their own way, forming their own cartels such as the Sinaloa cartel, the Juarez cartel, and the Tijuana cartel. The Juarez cartel, or Cartel de Juarez, also known as the Vincente Correo Fuentes organization, is a Mexican drug cartel based in Ciudad Juarez in Chihuahua, across the Mexico-US border from El Paso, Texas. The cartel is one of several drug trafficking organizations that have been known to decapitate their rivals, mutilate their corpses, and dump them in public places to instill fear, not only in the general public, but also into local law enforcement and their rivals, the Sinaloa cartel. Its current leader is Juan Pablo Ledesma. The Juarez cartel, much like other criminal organizations in Mexico, also set up their armed wing, known as La Linea, or in English, the Line. The reason this name stuck was due to many of the original La Linea members being police officers. In recent years, it has been speculated that La Linea are now essentially their own entity and operate independently from the Juarez cartel though they still seem to be on good terms and work together. The Juarez cartel in itself was formed in the 1970s and were run by Pablo Acosta Villarreal, though he would eventually be killed in April of 1987 during a cross-border raid by Mexican Federal Police helicopters in the Rio Grande village of Santa Elena in Chihuahua. Rafael Aguila Gerardo took his place along with Amado Carrillo Fuentes, the nephew of Ernesto Fonseca Carrillo, aka Don Neto, who was one of the main leaders in the Guadalajara cartel. Gerardo was eventually betrayed and murdered by Amado in 1993, and Amado became the leader of the Juarez cartel. The organization grew exponentially under Amado Carrillo Fuentes. More prone to negotiate than fight, Carrillo Fuentes reconstructed Felix Gallardo's old network and more. Eventually, he controlled at least half of all Mexican trafficking and even extended his operations to Central America and into South America, including Chile and Argentina. Amado's international connections earned him the nickname the Lord of the Skies. By using commercial and parcel air traffic, the Juarez cartel moved thousands of tons of Colombian cocaine into Mexico by air, then into the United States by land. Unlike many cartels in Mexico at the time, Amado also managed to create his own distribution networks in the United States. He was a trendsetter and a trailblazer. By the mid-1990s, the Juarez Cartel was arguably the biggest criminal organization in Mexico. By 1997, it seemed like there was nothing stopping the Juarez Cartel. However, Amado Carrillo Fuentes died abruptly in 1997 while getting plastic surgery, leaving behind a well-structured cartel but a massive void at the top. Amado's brother, Vincente and Rodolfo, took over, but a power struggle quickly ensued. After some infighting, the two brothers and their nephew, 
Vincente Carrillo Leyva established a firm command over the cartel. By 2002, the Juarez cartel, looking to expand, developed a partnership with Cartel de Sinaloa, which was dubbed by the media as the Federation. However, as you would expect, the partnership would not last long. Rodolfo killed two of El Chapo's associates for not paying him to use the Juarez Corridor. Joaquin Guzman then gathered his allies and told them simply that Rodolfo, aka El Nino de Oro, had to die. Faced with a choice, Guzman's partners, including Ismael Zambada, the Beltran Leyva brothers, and Juan Jose Esparagoza Moreno chose him. Rodolfo was then killed with his wife as they walked out of a movie theatre in September of 2004. Guzman's brother Arturo was also killed just a few months later. The war was well and truly on, and the bloodshed made Juarez one of the most dangerous places not only in Mexico, but in the world. Since 2004, the war has been ongoing, but truth be told, the Sinaloa cartel have dominated them in every aspect, from manpower to financial resources and overall influence. The Juarez cartel continue to fight, however, primarily, they only operate in the state of Chihuahua, mainly in the city of Juarez. The new modus operandi in Mexico, that of using small, more sophisticated paramilitary forces to control swaths of territory, has made it hard for the Juarez cartel to compete. While its two main gangs, La Linea and the Aztecas, are formidable, they have had difficulty keeping pace with their competitors that work for the Sinaloa cartel. In recent years, the Juarez cartel has fragmented into smaller splinter factions like La Linea, who appear to play more of a role in controlling territory formerly held by the group. Despite recent news reports about its decline, the Juarez cartel still remains a very powerful criminal organization in Mexico. Small cells carry out different types of operations, ranging from transportation and distribution of drugs. Street gangs, mostly in the north, act as the enforcement wing and are involved in human trafficking and kidnapping operations, as well as extortion. That said, the Juarez cartel, as it was once known, is a shadow of its former self. Fragmentation has dogged the group in the past few years, and it seems like the armed wings it developed for security purposes now have more sway in the border region under the group's control. The turning point was ultimately the war with the Sinaloa cartel. It has led to the organization losing a foothold in various states across Mexico, and overall, losing a lot of its influence. As you would expect, the war, which has even expanded to La Linea battling the Sinaloa cartel, has resulted in unimaginable bloodshed, with some estimating up to 15,000 people being killed due to the conflict since 2004. During the mid-2000s, mutilated corpses being left in public view was a common sight in the city of Juarez, and as you would expect, the conflict has produced some graphic narco-propaganda videos from both sides. In today's video, we will be covering two pieces of graphic content, one released way back in the day, and the other being released very recently, which only highlights the longevity of this specific conflict. But nevertheless, what happens in the actual videos? The first video in question was released around the back end of 2010, and was originally first uploaded to YouTube with the title, Brother of Patricia Gonzalez, V. Piñata. Patricia Gonzalez was formerly an attorney in the state of Chihuahua, 
and her brother, Mario Gonzalez, was a lawyer in the area. It is worth noting that there were originally three videos surrounding this case, however two now seem to be lost media and cannot be found anywhere. Some called the series of videos the Pig Remover series. In one video, now potentially lost media, the victim, Mario Gonzalez, is interrogated and makes several confessions. Among them, that former governor, Jose Reyes Beza, and former prosecutor, Patricia Gonzalez, his sister, met with Vincente Carrillo, leader of the Juarez cartel, and also that they ordered an execution of an alleged Sinaloa cartel member. The only video that still exists from the three that were originally uploaded showcases the torture of Mario Gonzalez. When the video was first uploaded to YouTube, it was left with the following description. What was promised is doubtful. Here is the Valentine's gift for the former prosecutor, Patricia Gonzalez, with love from the original Puma. Greetings, greetings, greetings. I'm not sure who or what the original Puma stands for. The video itself is 2 minutes and 51 seconds in length, and due to its age, the video quality is very low, as is the sound quality. However, you hear a song playing in the background, and the song's title is La Piñata. As you play the video, you see the victim, who is being held captive in a small white room. He has been gagged, and has had his hands tied behind his back as he sits on the floor. He also has a wire or cable attached to his ankle. Without anyone close to him, the victim lets out mumbled screams through his gag as he writhes on the floor in pain. He is being electrocuted. The Sicarios, who are still not on screen, stop electrocuting him, as the cameraman then zooms in and out of the victim's face. They then resume electrocuting him as the victim rolls around on the floor in pain. The screams are more like squeals, almost that of a dog whining. At just after a minute into the video, and after a lot of electrocution, a man Enter shot, wearing black clothing, and he is carrying a long object. It looks like a baseball bat, however, reports suggest it was a rubber-headed sledgehammer. It's hard to tell due to the camera quality. The Sicario then goes to town on the victim, hitting him repeatedly all over his body. The victim screams as the thuds echo through the small room. A second Sicario then enters shot, and repeats the same process. However, he hits the victim's buttocks repeatedly. He strikes over and over, so hard that it eventually appears to break the object that he's using. The other man then enters shot again, and once again beats the victim all over his body. The victim remains conscious throughout the whole video, and his groans of pain reverberate and echo around the tiny room. It's hard to watch. It appears the Sicarios were deliberately trying to avoid hitting his head, making sure not to knock him out so that they could torture him for longer. Regardless, aside from what we see on film, we still don't know the full extent of Mario Gonzalez's ordeal. Mario was captured in late October of 2010, and the videos surfaced online only a few days after his capture. His body was found in a shallow grave on a construction site in Chihuahua in early November of 2010. The final cause of death appeared to be strangulation. Around eight men were arrested for his murder. All, according to news reports, worked for Cartel de Sinaloa. Patricia Gonzalez denied the allegations that she favoured the Juarez Cartel. She had speculated that the kidnapping and killing was work of vengeful drug cartels, and even some state police or ex-police, who resisted her efforts to reform the judiciary and law enforcement agencies. She stated, 
It hurts my soul that criminals use my brother to punish me. The second video. Once again, a gruesome byproduct stemming from the Sinaloa vs. Juarez cartel war is a far more recent release. The video first made the rounds in and around the 24th of August 2023 and is a short but brutal one. It's only 26 seconds in length. The video is dubbed by music. The track is Comandante Comino V2 by El Macabro. As I said, the video is short and gets straight to the point. As you play the video, you see the victim with his hands tied behind his back, laying on the ground, surrounded by Sicarios belonging to La Linea. The video is shot in a desolate location during the middle of the night. Allegedly, the victim is a member of Cartel de Sinaloa, though the location of filming is unknown. Despite the music playing over the video, you can slightly hear the sounds from the actual clip. The victim, who is wearing a black hoodie, lays on the ground, and a Sicario uses his gun stock, which is an AR, and he smashes the victim repeatedly in the head with the stock. He hits the victim hard and often, as the captive is squirming around on the ground. Despite the loud music dubbed over the video, you hear the fudding sounds it makes. While the victim is having his head beaten in with the stock of the gun, another Sicario can be seen carrying a machete, appearing to try to get an angle to cut the victim. It's worth noting that the video is shot from a close-up perspective of a victim, so you see none of the Sicario's features. The Sicario then stops beating the victim, so that the other can use the machete to cut his throat. The blade looks sharp, he slices through the throat as the victim lays on his back, and you hear the gurgling groans as the blade penetrates and slices his windpipe. Blood immediately puddles on the dirt floor. Instinctively, the victim actually rolls over onto his stomach, However, the Sicario then cuts the back of his neck, which is where the video ends. The video was actually screen recorded on a mobile device, as if somebody was watching it on a social media app, possibly something like Snapchat. You see notifications pop up as the video plays, which potentially means there's a longer version of a video, or even additional clips. Though, if there are, these are yet to have made their way online. Ultimately, these two videos are a drop in the ocean when it comes to the violence caused by the war between the Sinaloa cartel and the Juarez cartel. A war that will have been going on for 20 years in 2024. Despite the Sinaloa cartel being the far bigger organisation, and quite frankly, they have decimated the Juarez cartel in recent years. The conflict still shows no signs of ending anytime soon. But anyway, that is the video. I hope you enjoyed it if you can enjoy this sort of content. First and foremost, I would like to apologise for how I sound. I'm not sure whether you can hear it, but as I record this, I've had, well, I've got really bad hay fever, so... I sound a little bunged up, a little more nasally than usual, so yeah, I can only apologise for that. If anybody wants to follow me on Twitter, the link will be in the pinned comment. You can also DM me if you have any case recommendations. Also, if you could follow me on Twitch, that would be much appreciated, as we stream every Friday after videos go live. So yeah, please check us out, it's a very interesting community, a little different to the community on this channel. We just have fun over there, and we don't talk about cases like this, although sometimes the conversations go a little south, so check it out. But anyway, as always, stay safe, and I'll catch you on the next one.